Come back to it. Gonna, when did you say what date is that? Because a cat flying? Well, we're still working on it, but it's tangibly the 16th, 16th. 16th of March. March. What we're wanting to do is uh, meet down at the park down here in town. Nature Park. Nature Park. Not the one, not the Park, Nature's Park. Nature Park. Because we've got to have an open field. We're going to go kite fly. Now then, this is not just for kids. You know why? Because I'm going to be there and I'm going to be flying my kite. And let me tell you, I'm the champion. Okay? I'm the champion and you got to come and prove that I'm not. Amen. I love flying kites. Huh? Each person bring a bag lunch and a drink and your kite. Bag lunch, a drink, and your kite. And your kite. Okay? Uh -huh. So we'll set up in the middle of that field out there and we'll fly kites. The 16th of March. It's on a Thursday. It's on a Thursday. During spring break. All right. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are. I love to fly kites. The, uh, we go to the beach. I like to take me a kite with me and fly a kite down on the beach. Bye. 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 Okay. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Darlene had asked this morning if, if it's all right or proper to raise your hands in church. Yes, amen. Let me tell you this. You want to raise your hands, you raise your hands. If you want to stand up and say amen, you say, say amen. You want to get up and start testifying, we'll listen to you testify. Amen. Yeah, I was told it wasn't, that it wasn't, you wasn't supposed to. And I said, well, I don't know about you, but I do. Amen. And I said, I will as long as I live for the back. I know there where I'm going. But I couldn't get to verses, and my mind would not let me get to verses right then to show them. Well, we'll figure that out, too. Galatians chapter 2 this morning. And we'll start reading about verse 15. If everybody would stand as we read a few verses. <clears throat> My subtitle here on this in my Bible says justification is by faith without law. And that's what our sermon will be about this morning. It says, we who are Jews by nature and are not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word this morning. Lord, it is that true word, the, the one that we must lean on. This is the one, Lord, that tells us that we cannot do anything in our own selves to be saved. We cannot do it. Only you can provide that. Only you can give us that assurance of a home in heaven. Bless those that are here this morning from the sound of my voice. Bless their hearts today and lift them up. If they have a problem with their salvation today, Lord, let, them, let them come today and get it worked out. Forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name I ask it all. Amen. Amen. This is what we're going to consider at this 
chapter of this <coughs> book in the Bible in Galatians, this is what we would call this the doctrine section of the Bible. And this epistle talks about justification by faith. We are justified by faith. Justified. Just if I never sinned. I love that uh, 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 analogy of the word justified. Just if I never sinned. Paul shows his perspective as a Jew. The very first verse, he says, "Who we who are Jews by nature. We who are Jews. He said, we are Jews. But we look at it at, at we were Jews, and we looked at Gentiles as being sinners. And in fact, in that day and time, Gentile and sinner were synonymous. They, they uh, actually, they, if they were talking about a sinner, they automatically assumed it's Gentile. They didn't look at themselves as sinners, but they were sinners. Therefore, the rebuke that Paul gave them shows a folly in trying to keep the law. How really foolish it is to try to be good enough to get to heaven. We still have people out here today stressing, trying to, they're, they're thinking, well, if I just don't do this, if I don't, if I don't steal anything, or if I don't uh, use curse words, or I don't do these things, I'll make it into heaven. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't tell us that you'll make it into heaven under anything that you do or do not do. Consider yourselves. We, we look back and we look at other people and, and us, me included, we look at other people like, well, they're a sinner. Hmm. I know what they're doing. Amen? We, we, we're quick to point fingers, right? And other people, I, I know what they're doing. This is what the Jews were doing, pointing fingers at the Gentiles. They're sinners. They're sinners. They didn't realize what? We're sinners too. We're also sinners. We really are. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. Amen? Have you ever heard that expression? In verse 16, and knowing not, now this is the one that, that, that we're going to spend some time in this morning. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Clear-cut statement this morning. Justification is by faith. By faith. <clears throat> Today, legalists, and, and we still have them in this, in this society today, are still trying to tell us, is that enough? Is that, are you going to tell me that you can be saved <coughs> and yet be a sinner? Are you telling me that I can be saved and on my way to heaven, going into a place where there is no sin, never has been sin, but yet you're a sinner? Can you tell me that? <clears throat> How can you be pure and, and, and say you're saved? How can you not be pure and say you're saved? How can you be a sinner and, not, and, and still be saved? That's a question that we all have to ask, right? How can you be a sinner and still be saved? saved by faith. You're saved by faith through who? Through Jesus Christ. If we believe that you could do anything at all to save yourself, that would mutilate completely what Christ did on the cross. Paul goes on to say, if the Jew, think about it, if the Jew had to leave the law behind just to get saved, can you get some water? <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> if a Jew had to leave the law behind to get saved, forsake it, 
In other words, to, in order to be justified, why would we want the Gentiles to think they had to go under the law? <clears throat> the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15 put this question to rest. They answered the question by, said that you were going to be guided by the Spirit of God and you are not under the laws of the Gentiles, or the, you know, the laws of the, of the Jews to be saved. <clears throat> Why? Why are we, how can we be saved? <clears throat> and as I said earlier, how can we be saved and still be sinners? Think about that. In your heart. How can I do that? How can I be saved? Is there some magic, magic form that I have to do? Is there some magic incantation that I have to say that protects me? No. It's because of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. I can tell you that magic, magic words is when he looked down from the cross and said, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord, forgive them. That's the only thing that can save us this very day, is what he did on the cross. Nothing that we can do. <clears throat> Knowing that a man, now he, let's look at this for just a minute. Knowing that a man, who's a man? Who is a man? Anthropos is what he's talking about. It's where we get the word anthropos. Anthropos, it's mankind, any man. Okay, any man. And I want you to understand, I want you to get that. If you get nothing else out of this sermon this morning, when you walk out of here, I want you to understand that mankind means mankind. It means white, black, yellow, Chinese, uh, Indian, whoever. It means everyone. Christ died on the cross for everyone. He didn't choose any skin color. Amen? <clears throat> it breaks down that social barrier that we have today that we call race. I never really thought about it that way, but Dora and I went to, uh, to the ark and we sat in on some of those sessions that they were teaching. You realize there's only one race, and that race is actually brown, okay? It is actually brown. Some are browner than others, amen? But there's only one race. When you go below the skin, we are all the same, amen? We're all the same. It's only because of the environment and our choices over the years that have, that have made us different. <clears throat> I can tell you this, though. Racism will be with us for always. It will always be here. <coughs> There's no reason for it, but it will always be here. What is it they say? The ground is level at the foot of the cross. No matter if you're black, white, red, green, it doesn't matter. We're all equal in the eyes of God. And you say, how do I know we're equal? I can tell you why we're equal. Because we're all sinners. All of us are sinners. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. And I don't care who you are or who you think you are, you're still a sinner. Amen? I don't care what level you think you're on, you're still a sinner. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. I think in the original text, you're going to find that the word the was not in there. So that scripture should have read... Uh, not justified by works of law. Of law. And that doesn't mean the law. It doesn't mean the Jewish law. It means any law. And today we are still trying to be justified by the law. 
by any law. The Mosaic law. We think of that when we talk about law all the time. All the time. But let me tell you, we're still spewing out laws in churches today. There are people saying that if you, if you want to be saved, you've got to join our church. You can't join that church down the road. You've got to join our church. Or there's another that says that you have to have a certain experience. You have to jump up and shout and run down the road or something. There, there's people saying that if you don't show it, then you never got saved. But that's not law. That's law. And Christ redeemed us from all law. All law. There's churches that say you have to be baptized to be, to be saved. But Christ is talking about, or Paul, the Apostle Paul, is talking about any law. He freed us from any law. The whole legal system, whatever it is, found in every religion. Do you know something? That Christianity is so unique to all the religions of the world. And I've studied several of the different religions of this world. And you're going to find that every one of them instructs you something that you must do. It's something you have to do to get to heaven. All of them. And it's different. Christianity is different. It tells us that we are justified by faith. And what is having faith in what? In something that is already done. Something that was done over 2,000 years ago. We have faith in something that's already happened. It's nothing that has to happen. It's something that did happen on the cross 2,000 years ago. It's an accomplished act. Every other religion says do. Christianity says done. It's already completed. In 1 Corinthians, you're going to find in chapter, or verse 12 and verse 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. So how could I ever call Jesus a curse? I can give you one way. I got down on my knees and I accepted Christ as my Savior. And when I got up, brother and sister, I hate to tell you, I got it all. I got everything. I got everything God had to offer to me. <clears throat> For me to get up and say that you didn't get it all, that you got to wait on something else, or you got you got to wait for the Holy Spirit, or you got to get baptized. You didn't get it all, preacher. You didn't get it all. That is cursing our God. Really. But he's saying that he couldn't do it. But he did it. That depreciates the work of our God. If we even attempt to say that, that what he did was not enough. Can you believe standing in front of an almighty God and saying, well, you wasn't good enough, big boy. I had to do something else. Huh? I got it all. When I got out on my knees, I got it all. I got all that I'm going to get. I got eternal life. If you look in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, who being by the brightness of his glory and express the image of his person and upholding all the things of the word of power, when he had by himself purged our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. What's that telling us? That tells us that Jesus did it all. He did it all. 
There was nothing else left that had to be done. Jesus did it all. And what did he do? He sat down at the right hand of God. In other words, he completed his task. He completed it. You know something? I don't think he would have sat down if it wasn't done. Amen? He would still be working on it if it wasn't done. But he did it all. And he sat down at the right hand of God. There's nothing else that needed to be done. This clear, this verse is very clear. And in fact, it's very, it's actually impossible to misunderstand. Knowing that a man, and this means any human being, man or woman, black or white, rich or poor, Roman, American, Chinese, Russian, it don't matter, is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith. This verse continues on. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. Who does Paul mean when he says we? He means everyone. He means me and everyone else. He's saying the same thing about he was a Jew. The Israelites are the same way. They are justified by the faith of Christ. It's very clear when you, at the conclusion of the verse. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now let's look at the next verse. Verse 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Paul, I think, is using maybe a play on words here. When he says, you look back at the law, what did the law give us? What was, what was found in the law? Found in the law was the fact that you became a sinner, didn't you? For without the law, you're not a sinner. But with the law, you found you are a sinner. <laughs> so, what is the final outcome of the law? What does the law do to us? What happened in when Adam and Eve sinned and, and God looked down at them and, and they were talking about it and, and they found out what? We're going to die. Now they're sinners, they're going to die. So what does the law give you? The law gives you death, doesn't it? <clears throat> All that the, the law is good for is to give you death or condemnation for what you're doing. Jesus Christ was declared righteous. And guess what? By the act that he did on the cross, you and I are now declared what? Righteous. We have no righteousness of our own. Our righteousness is filthy rags. <clears throat> when they say, if, if Christ saved you, if Christ, if you're justified by faith in Christ, does that mean that you are now a sinner because you're not under the law anymore? Does that make you a sinner by having faith in Christ? No, it doesn't do it. Paul says, of course not. They didn't understand the Jew like the Gentile were both sinners by nature. And he could not be justified by the law as been demonstrated. In Acts 15, 10, Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the net of the disciples, 
which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. This was the Apostle Peter saying the same thing that the Apostle Paul said. We are justified by faith. It's through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 18, For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. In other words, if I go back, if I go back and try to live good, and I try to live the Mosaic law, if I try to follow that again, if that's all I try to do, then guess what? Then I am not. I, I am destroying what? Myself. I'm reverting back. He says, I make myself a sinner by trying to go back to the law. So you never thought about that as a sin, did you? Trying to live a perfect life so you can go to heaven is a sin. Did you realize that? For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. Paul is saying, when Christ died, he died for me. I don't know about you, when Christ was on the cross, I was on his mind. Amen? Amen. I was. You were. We were all on his mind when he died. What does the law do to me? The law condemns me. It tells me I am a sinner. What do you do with sinners? You kill them, right? You destroy a sinner. If the law had only, if the law had just remained and nothing else, if Christ had never come and all we ever had was the law, God would have had to destroy Israel. They would have, he would have had to destroy the whole nation. So what did he do? He could see that coming. He gave them a sacrificial system where they could give sacrifices and to save them. But each one of these sacrifices pointed to who? To Jesus Christ. The law, Paul says, can therefore condemn them. The law has accused man, and we all stand guilty before the law. We're all guilty. So the law actually is responsible for Jesus dying on the cross, isn't it? Therefore, the law could not do for me what Jesus Christ has done for me. And get that word, done for me. It's already done. He took my place and he died for me. And, but, you know, when we dwell on this about sin, Christ took all my sins on the cross. Amen? He took his sin, my sins upon him. But you know what else? He gave me something. He gave me life. I was condemned to die under the law. Now he gave me life. Because he took away those sins. He gave life. In verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hmm. This verse states a fact that every true believer forever true believer we are not to seek to be crucified you heard people say that I gotta carry my cross I carry my cross well, let me tell you you do have a a cross to bear amen you got that but you're not carrying it up Golgotha's hill to be crucified. You know why? Because Christ did it. Christ did that. 
And we rely upon what Christ did, not what we're going to do. We've already been crucified. We were crucified when Christ died on the cross. We were crucified also. Our sins were washed away. Christ died on the cross, paying the penalty for our sin. Every one of us. Every sin. It was substitutionary. Paul declares this, that under the law, he was tried, found guilty, condemned, but then the person, there was a substitute for my punishment, and that was Jesus Christ. So how do I live? Paul says, nevertheless, I live. How do I live? I live by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave me life. He took my sins away and gave me life. People talk about living a crucified life. You know something? It'd be kind of foolish to crucify ourselves, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? We have, as I said, we have our crosses to bear, but we don't, we don't crucify ourselves. In this world, you can commit suicide in many ways. You can hang yourself, shoot yourself, take poison, jump over a bridge, jump in front of a train if you want to. There's many ways, but I can tell you this, you cannot crucify yourself. You ever think about that? You can't do it. Why? Well, if you if you nail in, in in this hand, you nail the nail, and in your feet, what about this hand? How you gonna do it? You cannot crucify yourself. Paul says, I am crucified. Christ did it, but he did it for me. He was my substitute. Paul says, I was crucified when Christ died. Hmm. Romans 6 tells us that we have been buried. Do you know that? Christ says, we've been, it, the, Romans 6 says, we've been buried. We're buried where? When we're baptized. We're buried, aren't we? And raised to what? Newness of life. What did Christ do? He was buried. Three days later, what? He arose to newness of life. And the life, Paul says, which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. But Paul says that Jesus had to give himself. He gave himself as a gift. So we accept it by what? We accept it by faith. Do you know that any gift that you get is ex it's received by what? By faith. By faith. You have to believe, first of all, that the, that the giver who has given it to you, he holds it out you have to believe that he's going to give it to you, right? He's not going to be an Indian giver. He's not going to take it back. Amen? That's what we used to call him as kids. An Indian giver, he gives something and takes it back. Christ's not going to do that, is he? You have to believe in faith that somebody's going to give you something, that they're literally going to give it to you, aren't you? That's in faith. And until you reach out and take it, guess what? It's not yours until you do that. So the same thing about salvation. It's not yours until you reach out and take it. <laughs> this verse, it makes you wonder if Paul was probably present at the crucifixion. Think about that. The Apostle Paul was a Pharisee. He was a young guy. He hated Jesus Christ. He hated what he stood for. And you know something? 
to be a young Pharisee in that day and time and this event going on, do you think that he wouldn't be at the crucifixion? <clears throat> you know, he, he thought Christ was dead, didn't he? On the Damascus Road, when Paul was going to seek out Christians, he thought Jesus was dead. He had seen him die. But now we know that he came to know the glorified Christ, didn't he? The one that died down here. He said, while I was ridiculing, shooting my mouth off about him, expressing my hatred for him. I'm sure he stood in the crowd. Said, look at this man. Look at him. He's just a man. Look. And going on about what it was. Expressed his hatred for him. Even then. Jesus Christ from the cross loved him. He loved him. You know something? Paul called himself chief of sinners. And you know, he probably was. He probably was. This probably wasn't an exaggeration. He was probably chief among all of those there saying that this man needs to die. Each one of us here, can, we can... We can tread down the name of Jesus Christ. I've got to hurry. I'm sorry. You can step on his name. You can call him names. You can put him down. Remember this, though. When he said from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So when you run into somebody that doesn't believe in the Lord, just remember what Jesus said. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. They really don't. Even if you hate him, he still loves you. He loves the atheists, the ones who deny him. He loves the tribesmen over in Africa that's never heard his name. He loves each and every one of them. He loves the worldly person who has no time to consider Jesus Christ. And that final verse this morning. I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law then Christ is dead in vain. The main thought of this verse is simply that if there had been any other way, any other way to save mankind, God would have done it. He wouldn't have let his son die. If there was any other way, he wouldn't have done it. Everybody stand if you would. Let's get a better